What's going on? Welcome back to Curtis Shaw TV. This is the Arsenal 2018-19 season review. It's been a tough week for Arsenal fans. Um, you know, the Europa League final was terrible. It was a sad end to a long season. A season that offered so much promise and look, man, it finished in a bad way. So overall, I just want to quickly go over the season. 22 game unbeaten run. We had a striker in Aubameyang who finished with the golden boot. We've got Alexandre Lacazette who got Arsenal player of the season and many people thought he had a great season. Unai Emery gave the team a new burst of energy. We also made five signings in the summer. So where did it all go wrong? For me, one of the biggest issues is this Arsenal team still can't defend. It doesn't matter which personnel we pick, which formation we pick. We do not have good enough defenders. We don't have a system in place. We don't know how to defend. We have to score two, three, four goals to win games. Until we address that, we've got no chance. I said in my previous video, Arsenal at this moment are currently closer to West Ham and Everton and Leicester and Wolves than we are to Liverpool and Manchester City. We are miles behind them. Quickly, one thing I want to say. Tottenham lost last night to Liverpool and I think every Arsenal fan was happy to see Tottenham lose. Of course, I'm the same. I wanted them to lose. I was happy to see Liverpool win. Well, let's get one thing straight. You should always concentrate on your own house before you worry about what your next door neighbours got inside this. Let's worry about Arsenal before we overly think about Tottenham's failings. Let's look at our own club. Yeah, I understand Tottenham lost. It's worth a giggle and a bit of banter on social media. But that shouldn't be the pleasure of our season that Tottenham lost the Champions League final. It takes a lot of quality to get into a Champions League final in the first place. We have to start making progress. In my opinion, Stan Kroenke will not back Unai Emery properly this summer. He hasn't done it in the past. If he didn't do it for Arsene Wenger, who was at the club for over 20 years, who he had a great relationship with, then why would he do it for Unai Emery, a guy who's been at the club for, what, a year? There's no reason that he's going to change. If he does not back Unai Emery this summer, I don't see much changing for Arsenal next season. The fans will have to put things into action. I think when people wanted Wenger out, there was a big split in the camp. 50-50, do you want him, do you not? And that's why that whole situation didn't go well. But with this Kroenke situation, I believe 70, 80, 90% of Arsenal fans want him to change the way he runs the club or move the club on to someone who will run us properly. Football's turned into a money business now. You cannot compete without spending. The team who won the league, Manchester City, they spent the most money overall. Liverpool spent huge money in the summer. Look at the rewards, especially when you've got the right manager. One thing I want to look at with this Arsenal team, there is such a lack of balance in this team. You look at the wingers, you start with Iwobi and Mkhitaryan. Mkhitaryan, this guy a few years ago, was one of the best wingers in Europe at Dortmund. Struggled at United. I thought it may be because of Mourinho and the type of manager it was. He really hasn't kicked on at Arsenal. The Alexis sanchez Mikatarian swap has got to be one of the worst swap deals in Premier League history for both clubs. It really hasn't worked. We gave up a superstar for a guy who hasn't done well for us. And Man United have turned a superstar into a guy who just looks finished. Whether that's their fault or not is a different matter. Alex Iwobi brings a lot of debate amongst this fan base. You know, sometimes he's decent, sometimes he's not. He's got a bit of pace, he's direct. For me, I don't think at this stage Alex Iwobi is good enough for the required level. If we really want to be ambitious and move forward, our fan base has to have more ambition. We have to want better, we have to demand better. We can't say we want top four, but we're willing to accept players who aren't good enough. Yeah, support them. But be realistic when you're reviewing them and talking about them. Let's not say they're good enough when, when they're not. We've got to be harsh. You look at the midfield. Xhaka and Torreira. That partnership was solid earlier in the season. But for me, it's not good enough. I think Torreira, we hyped him up at the start of the season. He seemed to burn out after January. Um, it's a tough season for him, really. But Granit Xhaka, he's been at the club, what, three years now? 
for me, I, I think he's inconsistent. I think he's a liability. I think at times he's good, but you're almost waiting for the bad game. You're waiting for the mistake. With top quality players, you're not watching them, expecting them to make mistakes because you just believe they're quality. Granite Jack is like a ticking time bomb. For me, if he was a squad player, he's okay. If he's starting him every week, the standard is not high enough. You look at the defence. For me, Arsenal don't have one centre-back who's good enough. People may argue, you know, Socrates, a lot of people praise him. 12 yellow cards, 11, 12 yellow cards in the Premier League this season, plus a red in the Europa League. He's 30 years of age, probably past his best in my opinion. I think he's been the best of a bad bunch this season, but I don't necessarily think he's the standard we require. The thing I will put into question is, if you put better defenders around him, maybe he will look better as well. Cajon is finished in my opinion. The injury problems are too much. Uh, Monreal for me is done. I would move him on. Kalasinac, left wing back's okay. His end product's not good enough. And defensively, he is absolutely shocking in my opinion. Hector Bellerin, to be fair to him, prior to the injury this season, I thought he was having one of his best seasons. I just hope he can recover from the injury. Rob Holding's a decent young player. Um, some people really rave about him. I think he's decent. Maybe we haven't seen the best of him yet. But again, I hope he recovers from the injury. You look at the goalkeeper. I think Leno was probably the signing of the season this season for us. I think he settled in well. He has to have a better back four or back three in front of him for us to see the best of him. He's making too many saves every game. He shouldn't be. should be games he makes two or three saves. He's making six or seven every game because of the weak defence. You look at the strikers. People have criticised our front two this season and it baffles me. Absolutely baffles me. Where would this Arsenal team be this season without Lacazette and Aubameyang? How many times have they scored the winner? Even on our 22 game unbeaten run, we weren't necessarily playing great football. It was individual brilliance, usually from one of them two, that got us the victory. People have said Aubameyang misses too many chances. He got the golden boot in a team that lacks balance, that lacks proper creativity. Imagine if we had two great wingers. Imagine if Meza Ozil was on great form. He got two assists this season. You can't criticise them. Lacazette got Arsenal player of the season this season. Had a good season. For me, there is one thing I would criticise um, Lacazette for. He's got player of the season. Last season, he got 14 Premier League goals and people said Lacazette wasn't great last year. This season, people have raved about him in the Arsenal fan base. He got 13 Premier League goals this year, less than last season, in a season where he's played nearly every Premier League game. I watch a lot of games where Lacazette scores one when he probably should score three, or he doesn't score when he should score one. For me, he has to be more prolific. His all-round game has improved. He's sort of playing like a false nine, a bit similar to Firmino at Liverpool. But for me, he's a goal scorer. We signed him for £50 million to score goals. We need a few more goals from Lacazette. But overall, the creativity for the front two has to be better. We've relied on them so much. You look at that attacking midfield role, Aaron Ramsey is a guy who scores goals from midfield. And when you look around Europe, there are not many great goal-scoring midfielders. I don't think Ramsey is a great player. I think he's a very good player. The bigger problem for me is the fact that we've lost him on a free when we should be getting 30 or £40 million pounds for him. Meza Ozil, I said in my previous video, for me, overrated. For me, his attitude, the way he came off in that Europa League final, I understand he's disappointed. But get off the pitch, think about your team, put them before you. You've won the World Cup, you've played for Real Madrid, put your influence in this team. I don't think he can do that. I think he's counting down the years now till he leaves football. He lives in London, he's got a big house, he's got his nice wife, he's on a huge amount of money that he probably wouldn't have got anywhere else apart from China. He's seeing it out now till the end of his career. Arsenal will struggle to shift him in the summer unless they pay him off. So for me, where do Arsenal go this summer? As I said, I think if Kroenke doesn't back this manager, the fans have to start acting. Whether that's protesting, banners, not turning up to games, hurt this guy's pocket, let him know this isn't acceptable. We've seen other clubs do it before and sometimes it's worked. If they do only have 45 million, there's a number of players they have to sell. For me, you, you look through the team, Czech, Ramsey, Welbeck, and Lichsteiner will all go. 
on free transfers, bad business there, you know, I know Czech's retiring, Ramsey and Welbeck should have been decent amounts of money, for me, Mustafi, Elneny, Jenkinson, Ospino, Callum Chambers, Monreal, Koscielny, maybe Kalasinac, Ozil and Mkhitaryan if possible, all of those guys I would shift in the summer, it's very difficult to move that many, I know, but I would be trying to get as many of those guys out as possible. For me, we need a right back. We need some cover for Bellerin. Will he be fit for the start of the season? I think we need a younger, more mobile left back. Kalasinac, Monreal, not good enough. We need one, possibly even two centre backs. Someone maybe to play next to Socrates. We need some athleticism. We haven't got a lot of pace in the central, central defensive area. And for me, you look at the midfield, it lacks power. And it also lacks a real top quality ball player for me. Since Santi Cazorla, we haven't had a dictator in the middle of the park. Before him, we had Cesc Fabregas. Since then, Granit Xhaka is just not in that category. Amazing thing, to be honest. We let Cazorla go on a free last summer. He's now been recalled to the Spanish squad and just been named in La Liga team of the season. Typical Arsenal transfer policy, eh? We need one or two midfielders. We're desperate for a winger. A winger who can really get the ball, go past people. For weeks I've been saying Wilfred Zaha, but with us getting in the Europa League, will we be able to afford him? He's an Arsenal fan. I'd love to get him here. Scored 10 goals this season in a bang average Crystal Palace team. I think he could go to the next level at Arsenal. We're being linked with players like Ryan Fraser. £30 million. I just don't think that's the answer. He's a decent player. 20 mil maybe. But no, not the answer for me. I think we're going to have to promote some of the young players. You see what Liverpool have done with Trent Alexander. They picked up a gem in Robertson. Something Arsenal will have to look at with Enketi or Nelson, players like that this season. So there's a long summer coming up. We'll be watching all the transfer you know, channels and seeing what happens and seeing who we're linked with. But overall, for me, the 2018-19 season has been a poor one. Just before I finish, one thing I wanted to say about the manager. I think it's his first season. I wouldn't be asking for change. I questioned him in an interview I did at the end of last season. I think Arsenal threw away the top four. When you've got Brighton and Palace at home, Wolves and Leicester away, you need one win out of those four and you can't get it. You have to question the manager. He rotated his team late on when I think the strongest team should have been picked for those last four games. We missed out on the top four and then... The Europa League that he was a specialist in that I think he believed he was going to win. We messed that up as well and messed up our season. And ultimately, you look at this season, Manchester United, they haven't turned up this season. Chelsea were in disarray at one stage. They wanted the manager out. Tottenham lost over 10 games this season in the Premier League. Are those three going to give Arsenal that opportunity next season? I don't think so. So overall, as I say, for me, the 2018-19 season was a disappointment. A few individual players who we can praise, Leno, Lacazette maybe, Aubameyang, Torreira for the start of the season. But overall, not good enough. What's going to happen in the summer? Stay tuned, there'll be more videos. We'll start doing some different things, getting people involved in interviews. Look out for the next video. Bless.